Good day, I'm Philip DeFries, and I'm here to talk a little bit today about what's happened in the last month or so in the debate here in South Africa about land expropriation without compensation. Since Cyril Ramaphosa has been president of the land, it has become a raging issue. I'm here today to just say one thing, and that is that I want to ask several questions, which I think everybody should be asking at a time like this. We all believe from a biblical vantage point that there's a necessity for restitution of one kind or another. But the word restitution can mean one thing to one person and quite another thing to somebody else. Can I propose this, that the biblical concept of restitution is what we should be calling for. And when we start asking that, we must ask who are the guilty people? And is it all white people being referred to in this dilemma. You know, this motion was opposed when it came up in Parliament by the Reverend Kenneth Meshway of the African Christian Democratic Party. And he said this, the expropriation of land without compensation has historically destabilized econ economies as it does this. It destroys investor confidence and it also scares away foreign investors I think we need to listen to this wise man in a very clear way. And then he, he added something else about this. He said, the fact that the apartheid government forcefully dispossessed black people of their land does not dis justify the democratic government repeating the same evil. The ACDP will not support this motion before us, is what he said, because we believe expropriation of land without compensation is another forced takeover of land which involves paying evil with evil two wrongs do not make a right so having said that since when is government the best broker for land expropriation at a time hear me folks when corruption has been so pandemic at all levels of government and then we need to ask another question. What is going to happen to all the Khoi and the San people when they start making claims to this government that's currently in power for compensation of land that has been stolen from them? Let's go and ask another question. What is going to happen to all the white farmers who a couple of decades ago began to train their workers in commercial farming methods and have allocated land to them, which has been such a success over many years. I drove by some of that land not so long ago, and we're very proud of what these guys have done over the years in, in making such an impact. But then we need to ask another question. Is not Zimbabwe a lesson for South Africa where untrained people were given land? and did nothing to develop it, thereby creating a misery index, which ultimately cost Mr. Mugabe his privileged position as president, not even a year ago, and which, which position he has occupied for many, many decades. This coupled with the fact that subsistence farming is never going to enable the peoples of the land to receive what is necessary to keep starvation away from the poor masses. Let's go to some other questions. Many towns were once part of the countryside. Are we now going to expropriate land from existing and viable towns and cities, or is this just on existing farmland? And then what is government also going to do with the millions of hectares they already owned and are lying fallow doing nothing with nothing going on in terms of agriculture or heritage development. Is this not a bit hypocritical? From a biblical vantage point, land ownership is always indelibly connected to stewardship, which means that any transfer from one to another must give value to that transaction in the community they are a part of. In that light, how is this going to be addressed in a place where an experienced landowner is being replaced by someone who just wants his or her land back, who have no expertise or even 
experience. In that regard, how is handing over property to someone with a limited skills and compensated job going to benefit the community at large? Christian ethical principles dictate that land ownership should not perpetuate poverty and monopolies. How can this be the case when land is forcibly expropriated, which for some is their only source of income, thereby ensuring poverty and the attendant monopoly in one act by government? Furthermore, how many of these land claim cases are going to be taken over what period of time to the Supreme Court of the land of South Africa and at what expense to the overtaxed South African public already unless South Africa ceases to be a parliamentary democracy and becomes a police state similar to what happened in other countries around our African continent. An additional question pertains to the righteousness of taking something away from somebody who could quite conceivably be a progressive employer for his or her workers with full marks for worker development and affirmation. But because of another person's sins from back at the beginning of the last century, now they have to pay? How can that be right? One final question. Is there not the smell of a complete socialist agenda to this maneuver by government, which as most people know has never worked implicitly or explicitly on this beloved continent. The only place socialism has ever worked on a consecutive basis is when it has been coupled with capitalism. Socialism and capitalism together can make a formidable force. And I'm referring specifically to the land of Israel. Think about that. As you consider this land of land expropriation, I would like to hear back from you and look forward to your responses to all the questions. Please get this word out, folks. It's crucial. Thank you very much.